Hi, I'm Richard Horn, and God has called me to the prayer ministry here at Neighborhood Church in Cyprus. And I am passionate about people connecting with God in prayer. And in our passage for today, we will be focusing on prayer. So welcome back to Neighborhood Bible University. And let us get started by me reading our passage for today. And the passage for today is Philippians chapter 4, verses 4 through 7. In verse 4, rejoice in the Lord always. And again, I say rejoice. Let your reasonableness be known to everyone. The Lord is at hand. Do not be anxious about anything, but in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your request be made known unto God, and the peace of God that surpasses all understanding will guard your heart and your mind in Christ Jesus. Now the goal in digging a little deeper into these verses is to strengthen our faith, to live for the Lord regardless of the circumstances or situations that we find ourselves in. And we can do this easier when we understand God's word better and applying what we're learning when we're faced with challenges that could otherwise overwhelm us and rob us of our joy. Now, the more we know and apply what we're learning, the stronger we become in dealing with the various adversities that confront all of us in this life. Now, with that as our goal, let's look at these four verses for today, one at a time, and then I'll tie them all together at the end. Ready? Verse 4, rejoice in the Lord always. And again, I say rejoice. Now, why do you think Paul keeps emphasizing and stressing the importance of being joyful in your life? Could it be that joy plays a vital role in the believer's spiritual stability and spiritual health? And that is why Paul keeps emphasizing this? Now, this repetition presupposes what I think we've all experienced. And that is, it is not easy to be joyful in stressful circumstances. But Paul writes, it is essential that we are. So, what about you? Is that your own experience in your life? Do you believe that being joyful in stressful circumstances and situations is critical to the Christian life? Is that something that you agree with, but you're still struggling with? And you're working on it, or at least you realize that you should be? Well, let's move on to verse 5. Let your reasonableness be known to everyone. The Lord is near or at hand. Did you notice that let is the beginning of this verse? And that means that we have a choice in the matter. Truly, it is an act of the will. Now, I'm going to give you a few Greek words. I'm just going to spell them for you because some of you like to dig into it a little bit further. And so the word reasonableness is spelled E P I E I K E S, meaning gentle spirit. Isn't that a beautiful word? Gentle spirit. This word is so rich in meaning that we do not actually have a single English word to describe it. Summarizing what I believe. Perhaps graciousness of humility. In other words, the humble graciousness that here comes, this is very important, that produces the patience to endure injustice and disgrace, mistreatment without retaliation, bitterness or vengeance. Wow, there's an awful lot to this verse, as I'm sure you will agree. Let's continue with verse 5. It says, the Lord is near or at hand. And once again, the Greek word is spelled, for near is spelled E-N-G-U-S. Once again, E-N-G-U-S. And it means either near in space or in time. 
Now this should be a great encouragement to all of us, for the Lord is always near. And may I say, he is as near as a prayer away. Now the following verses are truly crucial and critical for us to grasp and to apply. If we are going to live the kind of life, the kind of victorious life indeed, that brings God glory and fulfills our purpose here on this earth. It is so important that I'm going to actually separate verse 6 into two parts. The first part, do not be anxious about anything, but in everything by prayer and supplication. Now let's stop right here for a moment and dig a little bit deeper into anxiety. Some of your versions will say worry. Now what is it really? In the Greek, the word translated anxious means to be pulled in different directions. For instance, our hopes pull us in one direction, and our fears pull us in the other direction, and if we're not aware, and if we're not alert, we can figuratively be pulled apart. Now, the old English root word, which we get our word anxious or worry, means you ready? It means no struggle. Yikes, to strangle. So it's obviously critical that we're not anxious. Now, from a spiritual point of view, being anxious or worried is wrong thinking in our minds and wrong feelings in our hearts about circumstances, people, and or things. Bottom line, being anxious. Worrying is the greatest thief of your losing your joy. Now I have a question for you. I separated this verse intentionally in order to ask you this particular question. What is supplication? Now this is not a rhetorical question. It's something I really want you to think about. What is the difference between prayer and supplication. Paul didn't use two different words for the same thing. There is a difference here. Now, how would you describe supplications if someone asked you, well, I don't understand the difference between prayer and supplications. Is there a difference? How would you answer that person? Now, what I'm going to ask you to do in a moment, but not just right now, but in a moment, is I want you to pause the video then turn in your Bibles to Daniel chapter 9, that's Daniel chapter 9, and I want you to read verses 1 to 19. Welcome back. Did Daniel answer the question for you? Did he help you come up with your own solution as to what is supplication? Well, supplication generally is this. It is an intensity, it is an earnestness, and pouring our needs and problems before the Lord. Just, just, just laying them out before the Lord. In other words, we're getting serious in our petitions. We aren't just saying prayers, and we all say prayers. If you're a parent, you said prayers with your children when they went to bed. You said grace at the table. If someone's asked you to pray for them, you pray for them. We all say prayers. You see, there's no room and a supplication for half-hearted insincerity. It is serious. This is engaging in serious business with God. Where there is genuine pouring out of our hearts to Him in earnest. With an attitude of humility, we are beseeching, sincerely and humbly praying what is so heavy on our hearts. Now I'm going to read verse 6 in its entirety. Ready? It says, Do not be anxious about anything, but in everything, by prayer and supplications, with thanksgiving, let your request be made known unto God. And we'll stop right there. Let your request be made known unto God. Then Lewis be writes, Paul does not write, pray about it. He is too wise for that. He uses three different words. To describe right praying, how, how we should pray rightly. 
He uses prayer, supplications, and thanksgiving. Right praying involves all three. The word prayer is the general word for making requests known to God. It carries the idea of adoration, devotion, and worship. But whenever we find ourselves worrying, there's no recommendation that our first action ought to be to get along with God, if at all possible, and start by thanking him. Start literally by thanking him. If, uh, Paul writes in several other places of scripture how it's so important to be thankful. For instance, in Ephesians chapter 5, verse 20, he says there, for all things give thanks. Then you turn over to 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 18. He says, in all things be thankful. The bottom line, this also is truly an act of the world. We can find something to be thankful about, regardless of our situation. It's a choice that God has enabled us through the power of the Holy Spirit to make. Now, think about verse this verse six this way. Don't be anxious about anything, but pray about everything with thanksgiving, because prayer. With thanksgiving is the voice of faith. You're saying pretty much, God, I trust you. And when you do that from the heart, then that opens up verse 7 to be for you to apply to your own life and to embrace with your own life. And verse 7 says, And the peace of God that surpasses all understanding will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. My brothers and my sisters, that is God's promise to his children. Now we're pretty much finished with Philippians chapter 4, verses 4 through 7. And so what I want to do in bringing this study to a close is I want you to turn in your Bibles to a very helpful scripture verse. I'm going to give one out of the Old Testament and one out of the New Testament and wrapping up. I want you to turn to Isaiah chapter 26. Isaiah chapter 26. And look at verses 3 and 4. And then really meditate on these verses along with Philippians chapter 4 verse 7. And as you do, just ask the Lord to help you understand more fully how to rest in his peace. Okay? Isaiah chapter 26, verses 3 and 4. And Isaiah speaking, he says, You, to God, you will keep him, him or her, put your name in there, in perfect peace, whose mind is stayed on you, because he, she, put your name there again, Trust in the Lord, and trust in the Lord forever. So now the Lord is everlasting strength. And then the verse I just mentioned to you just a few moments ago, is First Thessalonians chapter 5, verses 16 to 18. And it adds one more essential reason why we need to meditate and learn how to apply these verses and living our lives for the Lord. Now, for those of you that have not come up with a life verse yet, I would recommend this. Are you ready? Here it is. It says, Rejoice in the Lord always. <laughs> right? Rejoice in the Lord. Pray without ceasing. That doesn't mean saying prayers continually. It means communion and union with God. You're living in the presence of God. So, it says, pray without ceasing. And then it continues on. It says, in everything, give thanks. In everything, give thanks. And here it comes. For this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. Got it? For this is the will of God 
did Christ Jesus for you? My friend, this is God's will for you. So if you're like me, you have a little bit of work yet to do to live like that. I want to wrap up our time together this morning by closing in prayer. I don't want to pray over you and for you. And it is this, that you will take these verses to heart and that you will ask the Lord to strengthen you in this journey of faith that he has called you to join him on. And so, Lord, I lift this up as I pray, as I pray over my brothers and sisters who may be tuning in, and I pray this in the precious name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen.